everyone. Welcome to another Chit Chat with Mandy and Carol. I'm Mandy, also known as the Board Gaming Pinup Girl. Hi guys, I'm Carol, also known as Carol Has New Too. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about the game Indulgence. Sounds rich. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds sinful. <laughs> All of those things I think we see in this game. <laughs> so let's just get right to it. Kiss the Ring. Indulgence is a trick-taking game where players can play as the ruler and win florins from other players if they take cards forbidden by the edict. But someone might decide to sin, winning florins if they take all of the forbidden cards. The player with the most florins at the end of the game wins. Give each player a strong box card and 30 florins to put on it, five one florin tokens and five five florin gems. Place the indulgence ring near the edicts. Draw the bottom card from the edict deck and place it edict side up next to the other two edict cards. You can skip this step in the first hand as there are already three. The ruler shuffles the family deck and deals out all cards equally to players. The ruler chooses one of the face up edict cards. This tells the other players which cards they will be penalized for taking. Starting with the player on the ruler's left, each player decides if they will pass or attempt to sin. This continues until all other players pass or one of the other players, not the ruler, decides to sin. If a player decides to sin, the sinning player places the edict card in front of them, sin side up, and tries to complete its goal. They also take the indulgence ring. If they succeed in their sin, the other players pay florins to them. If they fail, they pay florins to the ruler. The sinning player may play the indulgence ring on top of a card they play in the hand, giving that card a value of 10 for that hand. It cannot be used in the first trick, can only be used once per hand, and once used it is returned to the table near the edict deck. If all players pass on the sin, the ruler takes the edict card and places it in front of them with its edict side face up. The ruler leads in the first trick unless someone is trying to sin, in which case the sinner leads the first card. The winner of the previous trick leads the next trick. Play continues until all cards have been played. If there are no more scoring cards left to be played or a sin has failed, you can end the hand. When the hand is over, players pay or gain florins based on the cards they've taken as indicated by the chosen edict or sin. The ruler does not pay anything if they take cards forbidden by the edict. The player to the left of the ruler becomes the ruler for the next hand. The game ends in one of two ways. After three rounds, with each player having been the ruler three times, or when one or more players do not have enough florins to pay what they owe. The player with the most florins wins the game. So now we're ready to give our review of Indulgence. What do you think? The production is beautiful in this one. So I'm going to start with that. Art <laughs> is gorgeous. They have these huge huge colored gems um like it just oh and they give you a ring they give you a wearable ring <laughs> i thought you were gonna start with the ring the ring is like awesome i forgot about that i went to like the gems the card art and the, the ring. wearable ring it's like you want to wear it and then tell people to like kiss the ring yeah yeah or like you know just like beyonce it <laughs> See, I was thinking more like Robin Hood, Prince of Themes, and I'm talking about the like Kevin Costner version where, you know, the, yeah, um, the prince has the ring, ring yeah. and they have to kiss the ring. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically restoration games, their whole idea is just bringing back older games and bring into modern gaming by, you know, updating the visuals or even updating the gameplay and tweaking it a little bit. And I think they're doing an amazing job with that so far. The game itself though is another thing i have to talk about um so it is trick taking and i love that they added a little blurb in the rule book about what trick taking is because you know you hear it and you don't know what a trick is and all these other terminologies that you might be aware of and they explain it very clearly and i really appreciate that mm. <laughs> how do i say this <laughs> well um, let's hear let's hear all right. Um, so I love the fact that you can um, have these uh, edicts and um, 
you can either choose to sin, which is like doing the opposite and like, you know, getting points all through yourself if you're able to fulfill it or allowing it to be an edict. And then you have to just try and prevent um, who, whoever's leading that trick to, you know, to, to not get their points. Right. So that's great. I love that idea. I really do. It's just really weird how you play a couple of cards and an edict can already get broken. I uh, I have like a handful of cards that's ready to get going and then it stops after a couple of cards. I, I don't really like that. <laughs> well, I don't know I if mean, you feel the same. No, okay, so I get where you're coming from. I I liked it overall, so that didn't bother me as much as it bothered some of you guys. I know for me, like, okay, we don't need to continue with this round. Great, next, continue to the next, you know, using the next edict and go all that. So I think the goal is to not break it, right? I mean, if you can help it, it may happen where some of your hands, it'll be very short because you either acquired that card or, you know, you, you realize partway through, okay, this is not going to happen. I will break it. I don't think it's always even in that regard. Like, you may have a round that goes longer than others. That didn't bother me because you have to go through was it like 12 rounds or something like that it's, mm -hmm. it's quite a few so you have to find some kind of way to shorten it i don't know like do you feel that it's broken or do you feel like there's an alternate way to play it it's not that i think it's broken i think it's the fact that i was under a different assumption when i read the rule book because they didn't make it very very crystal clear that once it's broken like that's it it kind of just talks about continuing and whatnot it's just it feels like it's it's an incomplete round to me like i don't know if i need to maybe just get that that first impression out of my head for me to right. to truly enjoy it but i i like you know like if i have a great hand i want to see through it to the end not you know just because someone uh caused the edict to get broken like that's it and you just get get dealt a new hand again right I don't know. So I don't know if people are not following, but basically once it is broken, there really, or, you know, there is a point where you're not, there's no point in continuing with the round. Yeah. At that exactly. point, you just pack it in, move on to the next one. Um, it was weird at first to be like, oh, we don't finish this. That was a little strange to me. I would agree, but it didn't bother me. It just meant, okay, keep it moving. It just, the flow of the game kept going. So For sure. if you're not used to that, yes. And I understand what you're saying. If you're used to completing something and finishing, it feels odd that you mm -hmm. wouldn't just keep playing. But to me that didn't, I don't know. It didn't bother me as much, but I know that you were not the only one who we were playing with who's like, uh, I don't know if I like that. But then you had a suggestion. So my initial impression from reading the rules was that the way you're supposed to play it is you you see through to the end of the round, you play every single card you have, and ones that broke the edict, they just don't get scored, and those don't count toward points. So that just blocks the person from getting those points rather than, oh, too bad, um, you know, here's everyone's payout, let's just continue on and move with their lives. It's really just about prevention because the way we played it, which we did for a couple of rounds before we had to like really, really dig in to see like which one was which, was that it, it made me think a lot more about the cards uh, because, you know, I wanted to like block the person, not necessarily, you know, like stop and not get anything for myself. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I totally see what you were saying. I, I mean, and we played that way. I do think that would make the game longer. Mm hmm. Definitely. So, you know, that would kind of alter that and i don't know how people feel about having a long trick taking game i mean there are several trick taking games where you can play several rounds but you can kind of determine okay mm -hmm. you know we've reached that point where we're, we're good yeah i think the thing that just caught me off guard the most was that we've had edicts break within like the first two to four cards like almost immediately and it's like oh well oh, time to move on and, and i think that's what i was saying before like it's going to be some of them are going to be within two or three cards and you have others which are you know we can generally play out your hand so it's that chance right that that could mm -hmm. happen and maybe not so that's not always something people want for me it didn't I, I didn't mind it for me overall i actually i enjoyed it i i mean i wasn't one willing to take the risk to be like the spinner <laughs> 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 but, but just, it's really fun to be the center it's so <laughs> fun to be like Hmm, should I or shouldn't I? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's. I mean, I. I think overall the theme was really cool. I did like the components that definitely elevated the game for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
looking at it. Trick taking, that for me is I love trick taking games. So not particularly good at them, but I do really enjoy them. So that kind of threw me in. And I didn't mind the shorthands, just keep it moving. So if you're looking for a game that just gets to the point, you know, you don't necessarily have to finish the round for it to be clear. This is not going, it's done. It's not going anywhere this round. Move it along to the next one. I didn't mind that. But if you're a completist and you want to see it through, you might have an issue here. For sure. And I have to say, this is probably the most thematic trick-taking game I've ever played. Like, it fits so well and it just fits in, like, in, into the game itself. Like, I love doing this in Ain. <laughs> yeah, it was it, it was stellar in that regard. So if you like trick-taking games, I, I think you will like it. I, I mean, overall, trick-taking games generally have the same kind of elements throughout. This one had slight differences with the Edict, which I really enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I think if you like trick-taking games, you, you will generally like this. I know that it threw a couple people who played it for a loop with the kind of cutting it short, but I don't think it was a deal breaker for, sure. for me anyway. Yeah. For sure. Like my biggest suggestion would just be maybe make it a lot clearer in the rule book, just so it's not right. confusing. But other right. than I that, agree with like, you on that. Yeah. yeah. So I think overall for me, I liked this game. I really loved the components. They were amazing and the theme was amazing. So for me, I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost love the game. It's just kind of, eh. uh, I, I, I love the theme. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. Like It's beautifully made, well made. Um, I don't, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of eh. <laughs> and that's okay. We are allowed to, you know, and that's why we do these. So got to be 100% and people will appreciate it. So for sure. Yeah. So there you go. So those are our thoughts on indulgence. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.